Good morning, everyone. Um, as I said earlier on the group chat, we'll be having um, the part B of pandas. Okay, so I'll start from operations for data frame missing values. So as I told us earlier that there are ways to replace missing values. So let's consider this data set. This data set like this is DF. The variable holding this data set is DF5. Okay. Now we can go to the error. Let me run from the top. I could call me a kernel and say We start and run all. So let it run all for me. It is going to run all cells. So as you can see, all the asterisks, it means it's running. All the asterisks on the side. Okay, so it's now here. Okay. We talked about creating data frames. If you can't remember, please go back to the previous video. It's well explained there. So, so we'll be here, we are here now, and we'll be looking at operations for data frames. Data frame missing value. So now when we talk about missing value, in an actual data set that is in a real life data set, you tend to have missing value. So take for instance. You work, you work in a bank sector, okay? And in that bank sector, you are probably the data analyst or the intelligence analyst there, okay? And you are to analyze the data sets for January. I noticed over 50,000 people, in total, over 50,000 people made transactions. So you have their data, that detailed transaction from beginning of January to the end of January, right? And also, you notice that in that data set, like, um, let's say 20,000 out of the 50,000 has, each of, some of them have um, missing values. So how do you how do you deal with those missing values? And you, you have to make sure that, okay, your data set is complete, well clean, before you can start doing any visualization or try to make sense out of the data set. So how do you go about it? So that's a question you ask yourself. Now, for example, over here we have, let's take this data set for example, we'll be working with um, an actual data set from a class project. So now let's take, for example, DF5. Now for DF5, we have this data set. There is um, NAN. Now, if you remember, I told us earlier that NAN, anyway, see NAN, it means not a number that is it's, um, there's a missing value there, it's blank, okay? It's blank. So how do we fix this missing value? So there are ways to fix the missing value, okay? The first one is you can just randomly guess, which is not actually appropriate, right? You can randomly guess by saying, okay, DF5 does fill NA, that is fill anywhere it's a missing value. You should fix it with six, okay? Now that's why it's fixing it with 6.0. This is just an in this is an integer. Sorry, this is an integer, but because the data types here are floats, like for age now, for age and visit, data types are floats, that is decimal. That's why it's making it 6.0 here. Okay, so we are saying fill any six in place equals to force. Don't forget, I explained the difference between in place equals to true and in place equals to force. If you say in place equals to false, that is it's temporary. Then if you now say in place equals to true, then that means you should make it fixed. Okay, so now let's run this and run this. Now when we run this and when we run this, it's supposed to be true. So when we run when we run this now, you see we have we feel the missing value. There's no missing value here, right? Now let's call DF5 again. When we call DF5 now, you can see that we have the missing value back to its normal listed. But if we change here equals to true, let's change this place to true and see. So when I run this now and I run this, 
Can you see that it's now fixed? 6.6.6.0 is fixed. Now it doesn't change. If you if you like call DF5 again here and run it, it's still fixed. Nothing changes. Okay. But if it's but if it's um if it falls, it's temporary. Okay. I'm just going to run this. So you see that run from the top. So now you can see that we have um we have not a number. I have to run from the top so that because it's giving me the same thing which is not supposed to be. So wait for it. Okay, so DF5. The reason why it's, I, I went to the top to run from the beginning again is because what I ran, that is the data set, I had, this data set was repeating itself. It was saying 6.0, which is not supposed to be. So the best option when you have something like that is to run from the top or you just come to kernel and say restart and run or very important because you just be confusing yourself so we've talked about filling with missing uh, with any number of your choice so i decided to fill in six you could decide to fill it with any number of your choice or it's wrong it is not appropriate if you decide to fill with the with any number probably the nearest number to the digit let's say the missing value for our age now see we have five four two like we have five here five point zero we have four we have two and we have seven. You now do the you now see the since five is the highest tier, let's replace it with five. With the nearest numbers. You now replace everything with five. It's actually not accurate because it can it can um, affect your data set. So the best way to deal with missing value. The second way is to replace with um second way is to replace with um with mean value okay now let me talk about before i talk about mean value let me talk about um axis rule and column i think i've talked about this but let me just say it again so you know we've talked about in place when we say in place equals to true then it's permanently fixed when we say in place equals to false then it's unfixed that is it's temporary right now we talked about axis axis when we say axis equals to zero we are talking about rules that is rules like this B, C, these are rules. You have to understand the difference between rules and columns. Okay, so animal down, age, visit, priority are columns. That's one. So if you want to make changes, so the second way, after doing, um, if you don't want to replace with a nearest or a close, closer number to, to um, the age here. You could drop the missing value. That is, we could decide to drop NAN. When I say drop, I mean delete. You could decide to delete. So over here now we are saying we we'll ask that second method. Okay. So you could decide to delete. That is, drop any NA. So how do you delete? We just say we we'll specify what axis are we talking about. Okay. So all these axes now. So for example now. B has like two NAN, D has like one NAN, H has like one NAN, J has two NAN. So now we are specifying, we are saying rules in place equals to force. That is just the temporary for us to see. So now if we do this, you notice that the data set has dropped. That is, there's no J, there's no H, there's no D, there is no B in this data set here. There's no G, there's no H, there's no D, there's no B in this data set. Okay, that's because we decided to draw by row. Okay, but what if we decide to draw by colon? That is, we change it to one and we'll drop it. Now, you see that the colon we dropped is the um, the animal, the animal, it dropped the animal colon. I'm sorry the um, H colon and the visit colon. Can you see? Because it's them that has the missing value. It dropped this colon, H colon and the visit colon. Because they are the two colon that has missing value. 
So you have to understand one axis one axis equals to one is colon axis equals to two is row. I hope you understand. Okay. So we are saying in place intro equals to false. That is just the temporary. So let's just work with um, our normal data set. So back to normal data set. So ways to deal with missing value. You can go back to the original source of the data and update the data set. So don't forget the illustration I gave earlier that you work at the bank as an analyst and you have to um, you have to work on a data set that has like 20,000 missing value out of 50,000. How do you go about it? You could probably go back to the source or probably the database or probably the server or probably the website or wherever it's been retrieved from. You can go back to the source and ask for an appropriate data for it, the complete data for it. Then you could decide to drop any N. That is, you could decide to drop, that is, delete the number, the, um, the data. You know, over here we dropped some data, we dropped the data. But now dropping this data, you know, it really affects us, right? Because I say drop one by column one by axis, drop the column of of um, the data anywhere it's the NEN, okay? And it dropped it for us. Now age is missing and visit is missing. So with this data set now, if I want to plot, it won't make any sense at all because our important column is missing. Only if age and visit are not important to us, but they're important to us because let's say this is a um, we um, are taking our, our our cat or our dog or our snake to a vet doctor and they have to look at the age and number of visits and the priority of probably the sickness of the of the animal okay so they are very important so each of those each of these clones are very important so you cannot just say um, we are dropping the entire clone so what if we now change this place to zero and we run it right now we've dropped like how many we dropped one two three, four, we'll drop four columns, okay? Now, these four columns I will drop now, does it affect, with this little data set, are we going to be able to make some tangible decisions based on a um, number of animals, based on their age, visit and priority to the vet doctor? That's a question you have to answer yourself. So now looking at this now, dropping of missing value, we should learn, like we are to drop missing value like less than 2% or 5% of the data set. So let's say in our data, like I gave illustrate, I illustrated earlier that we have 5,000 data sets. That's 5,000 rows of data sets, of a data set, and we have 20,000 missing values. Now, you know that that's, and we have, so that means we have like 30,000 complete data sets, 20,000 missing values. Is that what I said? Okay, I'm talking about 50, not, okay, let's consider, let's consider 5,000, not 50 now. 5,000 data sets in total. We have 2,000 missing and we have 3,000 complete data sets now. How do we go about it? Should we just drop the 2,000 data sets and just visualize or make sense or do something with and work with our, our 3,000 data sets? What do you think we should do? That's a question for us, but I'm going to answer now. Okay. So I just want you to think about it. What can you do? Now, let me give us the answer to it. The simple answer to what we can do here now is to is to um, replace the missing value. Okay. Now replacing the missing value with an average column of of the um, of the average column from the data set. Okay. So now if you say we want to drop a, the data set by two to five percent. Okay. It's, you are allowed to drop a data set, but just make sure it's not above 5%, okay? So let's say, for example, we have a data set that, that it's, um, our data set, the missing value in our data set is less than 5%, we can drop it, okay? That is, the missing value is not that much, you can drop it, fine, you're allowed. But if it's much, if the missing value is much, this method will not work for you. That is, dropping of missing value, it won't work for you. So you just have to drop, remove that one out of it. So now the next thing is to replace with the average mean. Now when we talk about average mean, I'm saying for age now, for age and visit, that's when we have the missing value, right? Now how do we drop, how do we um, replace our missing value? You could replace by average mean. You say I tag here, very important. This is the most common way. That is the average mean. You had everything as 5.0, 5.0, 5.0, 2.0, 4.0 and 7.0, you had them together and divided by and divide it by 
sorry, number of uh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So you, and you divide it by you divide them by six. That is, you had all of them together and divide them by six. But imagine if your data set is very long, like over five thousand rows of data. How do you want to do it? You cannot just start saying um, five points. You cannot be doing this manually. I hope you understand. So that's where we have to use um, dot me. So now let's use a function dot me. So now let's copy. Um, this data set, we've been working with DF5, this DF5. So instead of us using DF5, we want to change the variable. So just a D of seven equals DF of five dot copy. So now, now, now everything, this data set now is now DF of seven. So if we run it, you see we have DF of seven. Okay, it's still the same. So we're just copying the um, the variable, the variable order, we're giving it to another person, or oh, you, you hold it for us. So now DF of seven is the order of this data set. Now, dealing with missing value by replacing them with the mean value average. So all you just have to do is to say mean average equals to df of seven of age dot mean. So now the mean average now is 4.6. You could calculate it manually, you still get this. Okay. So now you could just say df of age dot fill na mean age. So it's not going to replace. Now, if you look at this now, it's not going to replace every missing value with 4.6. So anyway, you see 4.6. Just know that there's a missing value in there. Okay. Now let's look. That, let's scroll down a little. Now, and I'll say df of phi na mean h comma in place equals to true. When I say in place equals to true, I'm saying what permanent change. Okay. I said permanent change. So now this is permanent. Now if you can see my my missing value here now are uh, are uh, six four point six four point six. But I'm not supposed to do. I'm not supposed to do. Uh, I'm not supposed to do. Um, I'm not supposed to do missing value for age alone. I'm supposed to do the mean value for visit also. You could try that one out yourself. It's like it's an assignment. It's a task. If you have an issue with it, just let me know on the group chat. So what you have to do is to do the missing value. Can you see that in the visit we have fix 4.6, 4 points, which is not supposed to be. We're supposed to find the average mean of visit and replace it also. Okay, so moving on, we have now this is the very important aspect of data frame or file operation. Now, there's something called read and write, more of like input and output. Okay, this is very important because we'll be working with, the, with an actual data set and it requires us to understand the type of data format we have. So, for we have different type of data formats. We have the HTML, we have the CSV. Now, CSV, HTML, I'm very sure we are familiar with HTML. HTML is like the one on the web, on the website. Let's say, for example, you like a table or you want to work with a table on a website. You could just copy the URL and import it. We're looking at that very soon. Now, we have CSV. CSV file is another file extension that has to do with comma separated value that is. Um, each data is separated by comma. I'm going to show us an example soon. So we have SQL data format. Now, SQL data format is the one that is from our database. If you are using SQL, my SQL database, when you export, you are going to have um, a format in SQL format. Then we have JSON format. This JavaScript format. Now, it's it's um, this one is it's also it's more of like um, how am I going to put it? Like you just have something in like name equals to your name. Um, first name. You could search for it. An assignment for us now is to search for different. Um, to search for the formats for each of these data sets. This is for um, five data sets. If you don't understand them, just search Google on Google. Google is your friend. Just search for JSON file format. You are going to get something explaining it on Google. Now Excel XLSX. This is Excel format. It's usually this or this. Okay. But they are both the same thing. Okay, but we go with Excel. But if you export uh, Microsoft and uh, Microsoft or uh, Windows, it's going to understand that XLSX. Okay, so now let's now work the data set. Now we've we've talked about now we've exported DF of seven, right? Now let's save this data set. Like for example, we want to save it. I cannot highlight this data set like this and just copy and say copy. I go and paste it somewhere. It might be rough. Okay, so I'll need to save it. So how do I save it? 
all I just have to do is to specify the format I want to save it in. Okay. Now there are two ways: either reading and writing. When we say read, that is, we want to impute into um, our Jupyter notebook. When we say um, two, that is, we want to export. I'm very sure we understand the difference between import and export. You want to import, that is, you want to bring something from outside inside Jupyter notebook. Export, that is, this to that's the output. That is, you want to take something that is from inside here to your own system or to somewhere. So now, we want to export this data set, that is, this DF of seven. How do we do it? We just specify the file from our CDF dot to S to underscore S CSV, sorry. Then we specify the name. Any name you want to give it is fine. So you can save it. Now, when you save it, it's going to save. Now let's try to save in another format. So I'm going to save in um, Excel. I'm going to save this. Now it's not saving in Excel. Why? No engine for file CSV. Now it worked. The reason is because the file extension I added was not the same thing. That was why. So I'm saving in CSV. The file extension is in CSV. I'm saving Excel. File extension is in Excel. I could decide to save in HTML also. Let's try to save in HTML also. We just have to come and change the HTML. When I run this, it saved. So now let's go back to our file here. I'm going to come down here, and you could see we have .csv. I'm going to open all of them. .html, and um, we have Excel. .excel. Now .excel will not show, being that or oh, it's, it's going to give an error, mean that um, Jupyter notebook cannot open it. But HTML, can you see in HTML? Table. This is an HTML table. If you are familiar with web development or web design, you should know that um, HTML tags you could also inspect. You could also inspect this to, to be sure this is a table. But actually, this is a table because this is how a table looks like. Okay. So if you come down here, you are going to see something table. So all these are table header. Let me show some. So all these are table header. So as I'm clicking on it, each of them, you could see each of them. Okay, you could see each of them. Can you see as, as I'm scrolling, it's moving. So this for this is a table. Okay. Now this for CSV. Now when I talk about CSV, I was saying each of the data is separated by comma. That's comma separated value. So you could see each of these data is separated by comma. Okay. So now I think we are good to go with that. So I'm very sure we understand, understand that already. So now let's talk about different. Okay, we've talked about um okay, sorry, this is where we are. Okay. So now let's try to read a data set. That is, let's try to read this data set. Don't forget this data, any data sets you want to work with, any data sets you want to work with must be in the same file location with um, the notebook you are working with. See, the notebook we are working with is 12 pandas updated, right? Now, see, it's the same file location. This is 12 pandas updated, and we have and we have the same file that we want to import. We want to import this file, anima.csv, okay? They are in the same file location, that is, the same folder. Okay, they are in the same folder. Okay, so now let's look at. Um, so I'm just going to call it df anima df underscore anima. This reading a data set. When I say reading, I'm saying imputing a data set. So df dot anima equals pd dot read csv read underscore csv. Don't forget this is the format read underscore csv or to underscore csv. That's if you want to save. Now this is reading and the anim this this anima dot csv is is 
is in the same file location as this, the notebook we are working with, okay? So now, after importing it, this is what we have. Now, when you have this, there's something called .ed. There are some functions we'll be working with. Now, we'll just say df underscore animal .ed. That is, it show us the, the first file. If we run this like this, it's going to show us the first file. If you say df .ed, it's going to show us the first file. If I say, if I say df .tail, to show the last five bottoms like from the bottom it's going to be from the bottom five of it then from the top dot add five of it so now we could specify what we want let's say i want i want seven of it so it's going to give me seven if i want ten of it it's going to give me ten that's everything okay that's because the data set is not that big so if your data set is very very big you say dot hundred it's going to give you dot hundred it's going to give you hundred data sets okay that's the, the hundred rule of the data set. So the first one, this is the first five, first five, and this is the last five. Without putting anything, if you just put it dot tail, it's going to give you the first five, and this give you the last five. So this allow us to see the top and the bottom of our data set. Okay. So now let's save this. Okay, we've talked about saving. Let me just save this. What about saving? So I do I want to save this data set now. All I have to do is to say df underscore animal dot to Excel. I want to save it in Excel and I put the file format. Okay. Then to Excel. Now, if you know Excel has different sheets like sheet one, sheet two, sheets, and so many sheets. So you could specify the sheets name, no name. You could specify sheet one, you could specify sheet two, you could specify. So just save this and it works for you. Now reading from Excel X S X field. Okay. File, sorry, this is a file. So how do we read from an Excel S file? So all you just have to do is to say PD just read Excel. We are still reading this same file that we exported. And if you come to this place, you see that they are in the same file location. They are all in the same file location. Okay. So now let's move on. I think that's all. So now looking at this last one, you say df pd dots on read excel sheet one index column none. That is the indexing of this none. Then na underscore value is na. So let's run this. Okay. So now that's all for it. Any underscore value is going to um, specify not a number where there's a missing value. Then we have the sheet number. Column index, that is this indexing number, none. It's going to export it. It's going to um, read the, um, sorry, it's going to read the data set without a column index, okay? That's why it's saying on name there. So now let's go to the class project. For our class project, our class project, we have this that we have to work on, that we have to work with, sorry. Okay, so um, I'm running this series. We've talked about NumPy, we've talked about Pandas. We are yet to do Matplotlib. Tomorrow, by God's grace, we'll be working with Matplotlib. Then next will be Sibon. So Matplotlib and Sibon are for visualization. So what do I mean by visualization? I mean like pictorial view of your data set. Okay, so now we've talked about different types of Pandas and different type of formats in Pandas. HTML, SQL, CSV, Excel. Now, how to import and read? We've talked about how to import and read, right? Now, there are two ways to import and read. There are two ways. You could eat, you could either say, um, okay, we've talked about pd.read. So this is the format. If you want to read an HTML file, that is, you want to input an HTML file, file you use pd.read underscore HTML. If it's CSV, read on ASCO CSV. If it's SK, read on ASCO SK. If it's Excel, read on ASCO SK. If you want to save a file, you say PD dot to HTML, PD dot to CSV, PD dot to SQ, PD dot to Excel, and so on and so forth, right? So now there are two ways. You now the first way I told us was that um, our file, that is the file we are working with, must be in the same location with whatever data sets we want to import. I'm pretty sure we understand the word data sets, okay? So for an example, over here, 
for example i have a class project folder this is a folder class project folder now in this class project folder i have a data set called existing employees file that is, is in a csv format this data set is in a csv format how do i go about it like i want to import it and the file i'm working with is this one they're in the same file location i mean they're in the same folder that is anywhere you see p i p y n b that is that's jupyter notebook file okay then the same file folder okay this two are in the same file folder all right now how do i go about importing it i've already explained it earlier for us all you just have to say is pd.read now we are looking we are using so now we said there are two methods of importing data sets in pandas the first one is the normal method i've explained before that is you just say pd.read underscore csv then the name of the file this is because they are in the same folder see the file you are reading either any of this file format must be in the same file location that this folder that you want to retrieve it from okay that is the data set and um, ipyb yes i think uyb nb sorry nb file must be in the same folder okay then that's why we are able to import a data set so this is an existing employee data set okay so when you do this you have this i could say p dot add it's going to give me the first five okay i didn't run this initially if i say pd dot add so it's going to give me the first five can you see this is the first five one two three four five okay if i now put in six here it's going to give me if i put 100 10 sorry it's going to give me the first 10. if i try to put um if i try to do dot scale and i run this it's going to give me the last five okay this is the last five if i, if I, if I decide to put 100 this is giving the last 100 from the bottom downward. And you see, we have 100 rows times 11 columns. That's this data set. We have 100 rows times 11 columns. Okay. So now the second method of importing, the second method of importing a data set that is, let's say, for example, this our note is in a different folder from that is in a different folder from our data set. Let's say our data set is in location A and our Jupyter notebook data um, um, file is in location B. How do we now want to read do, um, the data set? How do we read the data set now? That's why we have to specify the file location. Like for example, let me copy this and show something. So I have, So now I have this. I have see can you see the file location? I have a file in data set. I have a file in data set. This is the file I want to work with, right? This is the file I want to work with. But the other thing is that the file um like the um Jupyter notebook file I want to work with is in another folder that is the file I want to work with is here. This is the file, this is the Jupyter Notebook folder I want to work with. This is the Jupyter Notebook folder I want to work with. Let me delete this so that we don't get confused. No, let me not delete, let me just copy it. Okay. So they are in different file location. I have a data set. I have a, a data set that is in this folder called data set. That is this one. And I have a Jupyter notebook file that is in I have a Jupyter notebook file that is in um 
that is in data sets that is in class projects here yeah. how do i go about it that's the question now how do i go about it this guy this guy and this guy they're in different location how do i go about it now the simple way to go about it is that you know the file format you you want to work with so over here i know that i want to work with a csv file the reason why this is here because i i use it already this is not what we are working this is not the data set we are working with that's why i want to cut it out so it doesn't confuse us okay this is the data set i want to work this is the jupyter notebook i'm working with right and this is where the data set is and this is where the data set one is in Luki, um, abuja the other one is in lagos how do i go about it that's the question now and this is the data set now all i just have to know is note the file location that is this guy all I, i'll just copy it here and go to my so and say pd does read i know the file i want to read is a csv file so i only have, I have to put r r here means read then i have to put two um I have to put two semicolon here this is the open and close semicolon and i'll paste it here i'll paste it here that was not all i just i still have to put a backslash here then the name of the file i'm working with that is so if I if I just copy that please, I just copy sorry, if I just copy what is here, right? And I paste it here. It won't work. What I just did, it won't work. So I have to specify the name of the file I'm working with. And the name of the file I'm I want to work with is this. So I'm going to come here, try to like rename it and copy this, alight it and copy this there. Back here. And do backslash and paste it here and run it and now it's going to work i hope you understand this now working with this data set now we have another data set called upotbr.xls now let's let's go back where is it um Okay, so this is it here. Okay, this is the data set here. So now let's try to let's try to work with this data set. This is the data set I want to work with. Like they're in different file location. How do I go about it? All I have to do is I like here. Okay, so I like here. Paste paste what I want to do. So this thing did not copy. I like to copy this paste. Letter two. And I put backslash. And this box, sorry. And this is the name of the data set I want to work with, which is this guy. Okay. So all I have to do is to run and it's going to work. But now it's not working. Why? Because I didn't put what? Who can get R? I didn't put R. So when I put R, it's going to work. So that's how it works. Okay? So I could say B, Bob, the name of the data set is Bob. So I could say Bob.A to give me the first five row. I could specify the, the one I want to see. 19. I want to see 19. This is it. I could specify the tail. I could specify 19. Now, we have now this data set i'm explaining everything here because this is what we'll be working with like this is how you'll be doing your data um, the normal you're working with the normal data because once you have an actual like a real life data set the next thing expected of you is to import it right check the data sets that like is you check the data types in the data sets you have to check some information you have to check if there's missing value. You have to check a lot of things in the data set. Now, doing this process is called data understanding. You're trying to understand, you're trying to familiarize yourself with data. You're trying to understand which of these constraints or which of these columns is very important for me to make decisions with or to 
brought against each other to be able to make the decision. So now let's go to we could say bob.info. Now this bob.info will give us the data set, data type of our data set. I don't know if that one makes sense to us. So if I say dot info, I'm going to have this, which is going to give me. Don't forget, we've talked about the three types of data types. We talked about strings. We talked about integer. We talked about floats. We say strings are also called objects. So anywhere you see objects here, just know that they are referring to strings. Or Python. Python has objects. Deal with objects, but it's also called strings. Okay. Then we have integers. We say integers are all numbers. Then we we'll talk about floats. We say float are decimal. Oh, we all remember. So country, country are string, definitely country, countries are alphabets. You cannot see a country having number. Country are string like Nigeria. Nigeria is in the word. Okay. Population. Population is fixed. That is it's just an O number. That's why we have a data type called integer. Okay. Then death, TB death, that's that is tuberculosis death is in float. That is, we could have um, let's say 4,055 people died of TB in 1990 something. Okay, so you grab it in float. Okay, now we could say Bob dot is null. Now Bob dot is null dot sum. Okay, it's going to give us the um, the missing value we have. So now you could see that in this place now we don't have any missing value, right? For country, it's showing zero. For population, it's showing zero. For tuberculosis, it's showing zero. That means we don't have any missing value. Now, if you say Bob does describe, what is it doing? If you say does describe, it's trying to give us a, a brief summary of our data set. That is, we have a count of 1.900. All these plus are they are complex numbers, so we might not. But in count, you could see that for tuberculosis, we have it in this, right? For the mean value, we have 3.6. You know that um, the aspect where we're trying to do, um, we're trying to replace missing value over here. We're trying to replace missing value over here, and we're trying to do, uh, we're trying to do some the mean value. That is, we're trying to find the mean value here, right? I could come here now and say, let me run this. I could come here and say df of seven dot describe. When I run this, I have a mean value of what? 4.6. Can you see I have 4.6 here and I have 1.8? That's the mean value for age and visits altogether. So now, if I come here and I can, instead of me start doing all this, I could just say DF of age, fill any with this, and I can say DF of visits. I'm already doing the assignment I gave you. Here's the visits, and I could just run this guy, and I run and I run this guy. Sorry, the visits. Okay, so yes. So if I run this guy, I'm going to have this. So now this is our mean. So now I've replaced with mean value. So I don't have to start doing um, mean of age equals to df of this. So the moment I just do df dot describe, I have a mean value already which is 4.6 you see 4.6 here too and 1 point this okay so now we can come here and say now standard deviation standard deviation that's std as we know then we could find the mean that is the minimum value from the population is one point something for tobacco loss is 0, 0.0 for percentage 25 percent 50 percent the maximum is one point this the maximum is this so it's just for us to it's just a summary of our data sets so when we do a standard deviation for our, for our data sets, we are going to have this. If we do a mean value, we just say bob dot to be dead dot mean. We find the mean of this for our data set. Okay. We find the mean of our data set. Now, if you come, if you look at this place now, the mean of our tobacco loss is here. Can you see that the value here is same as the value here? Can we see that the value here is the same as the value here? Why? Because this bob dot describe give us a summary of our data set. So I don't have to start doing, but if I do dot max now, see dot max now, I have 24000. Can you see I will have, where is it? 24000. This is max. I still have the same thing over here 
If I do dot main, I still have the same thing. This is main here. I still have the same thing over here, which is 0 0.00 and 0 0.00. Okay. So we could also do group by. I'm very sure we've done group by by now from the beginning. You could go back and watch. So for group by, we could just say group by population dot max. So the maximum um for population is this okay if you group by country then you say dot marks we'll look down and see we could see from till from the bottom you could also add from the bottom so from the bottom we know that um, china has the highest population okay then we could do value count okay then we could do for dot till dot add so now for country now you could do value counts okay how many how many times was egypt um how many times did Egypt reoccur? Is there any duplicates? Here we are trying to check for duplicates. Is there any duplicates in our data set? Now you could see for country value counts dot max value counts dot main. Now for population, we notice that uh, this 2010 and 21 repeated twice. Okay, we're just checking for duplicates. As I told us, PANAS allows us to understand our data set. Okay, so to remove duplicates, Bob does drop duplicates. You could just drop the duplicate and say in place equals to true. Okay. So Bob the drop duplicate move duplicate for us. Okay. Now we could sort value also. We've talked about I lock, that's integer location. Bob dot I lock of zero going to give us integer location. We could do minus one. Minus one is counting from behind, just from the way we talked about list. That we have minus one, minus two, minus three. Go back to the previous video and look at the list. Okay. Then we talked about dot max. Then so we could decide to export it and say who population. And um, okay, this is not going to work. As we got haven't been running from the game. I'm run from the top so that I don't. Okay, so that's that for that. We could also do some comparison. We could say Bob of Bob population less than 100, less than equals to 100 by country. So any country that is less than 100, less than or equals to 100, we could see them here. Okay, we could do less than equals to 100 by mean. So you could play around with this and understand the concepts behind it okay so that is all i'm going to give us a data set to try out on the group chat so please try them out and if you have any issue let me know thank you very much